Hello, it's Andy here from CNC Labs. Um, I've been asked to do my production update blog in a video format, so here goes nothing. Um, I should note that everything in the blog is in long form, and it goes into a lot of detail, so uh, if I missed anything, you can read the blog, and there's going to be other information there too, so you know, follow along, but this way we can show some of the things that are going on, and you can, we can talk to some of the people that are involved. So uh, yeah, the idea is just to do this informally and show people what's happening. I don't think there's going to be any specific order of like what we'll share. So you know, that's, we'll just walk around and share whatever's going on, I guess. So uh, yeah, I, I guess the first thing, new thing is um, we, made the spring-loaded anti-backlash nuts. And so if you guys aren't familiar, we made, basically, we had this type of nut, and you had a screw that pushed the threads apart to take up the backlash. Uh, but over the years, there's been like some design flaws that we didn't really like. So I kind of, as a side project, decided to see if there's another way to uh, make the nuts better. And so one of the de designs that we came up with was to basically spring load them and push the two arms together so the threads get pushed in instead of like apart from each other. And uh, yeah, there's like a couple different designs. But I've been printing some other little things to test. Uh, so I think last in August, we put out for sale the first batch of 400 nuts where people could like buy them and then try them out. And they work pretty well, uh, but they're not like perfect, perfect. So I just sent out a survey to the people who bought them to let us know if they worked well or not. And uh, we've been testing them here as well. So we'll uh, tweak the design so that when we do into mass production, we'll be able to you know, get a good like, thing that works. Uh, so yeah, that's one part of the design. Oh, I've been also playing around with this design, which is like uh, a wrench that like undoes the Makita collet. And you just like kind of twist one way and then it twists both ways. And I don't know, that's kind of cool, I guess. Um, I've also been working on some new extrusion designs that we can use the uh, these type of linear guides on. Uh, it's just kind of like early stage. I think people might know about the alt mill project, which got put in hold some time ago. We're like kind of revisiting that now. And part, the other update is that we're moving to a new building, which will be double the size of this space, like in square footage, but also double in height. So one of the reasons we kind of stopped doing the alt mill stuff is because we just didn't have any space. Like we didn't have any space in the workshop to actually have the alt mill. But now that we have a new space, we can actually build them. And so you know, hopefully, that will work. Uh, other stuff, um, we just got the second version of the super long board as well. So this is version two. Uh, this is version one. Yeah, ta-da. So uh, yeah, so. This and this design are very similar. Um, the, the big difference is that the circuitry that we had to have the onboard computing, that's been taken out because what we kind of decided on was that the compute module that we originally had on this board, it wasn't powerful enough. So it would have difficulty running the graphics uh, to visualize the G-code. What we figured was if we use an external computer then we can have a lot more power, a lot more um, processing capacity, so that when we add like cameras and other sensors and things like that, uh, we won't have the headroom. Like we'll have the headroom to work with essentially. Um, also, it kind of like co separates the complexity, so that we can have a perfectly working board as well as a perfectly working computer, rather than having to make them work together perfectly right off the bat, because. You know, it's like more than double the work to do to integrate them. Essentially, we 
had some issues with the second version where we had to replace some of the com components. Uh, like we, there was a bad resistor. You can see there's some like burning here because Johan had to desolder some of this stuff and replace them. Um, basically, as far as I understand from the developers, to, these are for triggering different functions, like for the coolant and the uh, what was the other one? Like to trigger. I think there's like a door and a misting and like a bunch of other stuff that you can program with this the new firmware that's going to be on here. Uh, they needed more power to trigger the LED to show that they're on as well as to actually open the circuit. So with the new components, I believe they should fix it. And then in the production version, we'll have the right parts. So we won't have to re-solder a bunch of stuff and that's very tedious. Other things about this board that I can share. Oh, uh, Daniel is working on a new e-stop that will have the e-stop function, but also the control buttons on the Top, I think with the original board, I don't know if I have one here, but they have like the play, pause, and stop. The new ones, they'll have programmable macros, so you can make them do anything you want. So if you wanted to write a snippet of code to, let's say, uh, like move the machine to the back corner so you can change a bit or change the material or to the front corner to change the bits and all that sort of stuff, uh, you can do that. Another function is that we'll have dual PWM, which means that you can run you can have a different plug for spindle and a laser. And so if you have both, uh, you know, that we can, you can use both at the same time and you can program them separately too. So that's good. And Johan and I are also working on a CNC router, which we'll go over to that side of the buildings in a bit. So we can just kind of show you what we're working on. Yeah, there's probably other stuff I've forgotten about. So read the blog, because uh, there's a lot of stuff, obviously. Okay, let's go to the shop. So I think we didn't have, um, in the shop tour, which we did basically last year, we didn't have this uh, tapping tool, but we've been tapping stuff on this tool. Let me see if I can find a piece. Hi, John. Uh, OK, you guys, there's a picture on the blog. But basically, for all these parts we cut out, um, we use a laser to cut them. Uh, originally, we used oxygen, um, but there's something called work hardening that causes the holes to get hard, like stronger than the base material. Um, our manufacturer, which we work with, they've switched to nitrogen cutting, which doesn't have the same issues as well as it leaves uh, it doesn't oxidize the uh, edges. So in theory, we should get better quality holes and better quality tapped holes, like both of those things. So they seem to be working OK. We don't see a big difference yet. Um, but I think like, you know, when you're dealing with like a thousand pieces of metal, you know, just like a little bit of an improvement is good. Uh, so yeah, that's basically that. Uh, maybe we'll go to the uh, other corner of the shop. All right, let's go to talk to Johan and Daniel. <laughs> Hello. OK, so Johan's been uh, working. Sorry, they're doing like a production update, but they're doing it in a video format. So I just wanted to mention about the router project, and Johan is been, I can see he's working on the bearing specs. Uh, I'm gonna maybe I'll tell you guys about what Johan's found out because it's very interesting. Okay, so basically, over the last probably like eight months to a year, or maybe longer, we've been getting a lot of people saying that the the collet of the router is like heating up a lot, and um, you know, we've just been replacing them and letting the Makita know, like, oh, there's problems. Johan's taken apart a bunch because we're working on making our own router and we're trying to learn, like, what's causing that issue. And what he found is that there's, like, a lot of different types of bearings and a lot of different types of bearing races that cause, like, that have different functions, different effects. And the one that Makita uses is, like, a special low friction race that seals the bearing against dust. 
but it still contacts the, the spindle part. So it basically rubs on it, but not with a lot of friction, so it doesn't heat up. Um, if you buy like a Chinese clone, they'll use like a non-sealed version, so there's no contact. And that works because it doesn't rub, uh, but it also means it's exposed to the element, so it'll like lose its lubrication. Like you can have contaminants get in. From what Johans told me, the life sign of this, these bearings are very determinant on the lubrication that's in there. So either you can have it sealed and the lubrication stays in and you have a good bearing, but you have more friction on the race, so it heats up more, so you need a lower friction race. And you can either use a regular normal race, which will have a lot of friction, and then it'll overheat and cause its own problems, or you use the one without the contact, and it doesn't overheat, but it doesn't last long. We are not sure for our design which one we should go with, because we suspect the low friction stuff is going to be really expensive or really specialized. Um, so one idea is like maybe we should get like bearings that are super overkill for this spec, uh, for like the same price, and then kind of work out what the longevity of that would be or have some sort of way to lubricate them. You know, it's not an easy thing, but you know, that's what we do. Um, other stuff that's cool. Yeah, we're working on getting the motor parts. That's been a little bit tricky. And uh, yeah, Johan's working on like reducing the noise and stuff. Yeah, I don't know if I've got everything. Oh, uh, specific to the issues people are having with their Makitas, we opened a couple up and we think that that is specific to the seals that they're using. We haven't been able to tell exactly whether they swap to a uh, different bearing, different seals because of manufa uh, because of COVID reasons or whatever, but they may be using like, uh, they're not using uh, a like uh, a brand name uh, bearing right now. Um, and what happens is that um, um, the seals are causing the issue. So once we like take one out, like we have observed like situations where, you know, it's uh, uh, um, causing like a hundred less, a uh, hundred watts less of heat to emit from those bearings. So, you know, we're like, our takeaway is that, you know, like when we design our own stuff, we just really have to understand the dynamics behind um, and to, you know, do the proper engineering so that, so that this sort of stuff doesn't happen. Also, when I just like spend the last five minutes talking about bearing races, I actually mean the seals. Mix them up. My bad. Okay, cool. Um, oh, and then, yeah, these are like injection molded feet that we've been playing around with. So as you guys probably know, we 3D print these, but because we need to print so many of them, it uh, becomes very tedious. So Daniel's made these like injection molded feet. This is like a sample. They actually messed up because this surface finish that's supposed to be inside is supposed to be on the outside. Um, and then we found that this like lip here, it collides with the rail so it doesn't sit flat. So we kind of have to go back and fix these things. But the price of them is pretty inexpensive. We can make like 10,000 of these in like three weeks. So that will basically like reduce a lot of the 3D printing that we need to do, which is good because we'll probably need a 3D print other stuff down the line, so it frees up the space. Yeah, these are some prototypes of the e-stop that we'll, we'll use for the super long board, so you can change the, you can have macros that execute on these, and you'll also get your e-stop function as well. Um, oh, and then these are the new cases that we're working on. That'll be for the uh, super long board as well. So rather than, um, you can bolt them to the work, uh, your any surface, but also there'll be a bracket here so you can connect it directly to the mach machine. So it organizes things a little bit more. And uh, yeah. We're gonna show the lead screw stuff. I'm just like doing a blog update, okay. but like in video, video format. Form. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. if people don't want to read like many it. pages, yeah. but I was going to show them the lead screw profile thing that you're working on. Under the microscope. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you don't have to show it on there. I have a picture. Okay. You don't have to show it, yeah. but I'm just going to let everyone know that Michael is working on figuring out how the lead screw, pro we can make the lead screw profile better. 
uh, because what we're finding is that there's different standards and we're trying to get better, like less backlash on the nuts and also manufacture them like, so they're in, what would you call it? Like I mean, mesh together properly? Yeah. 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 So yeah, the, we got a f sample batch, but the threads are like standard size, ISO standard, but then they're thinner than the original act, like the square Acme trapezoidal one that we're not sure like exactly where the standard's from, but it gets used in like 3D, pr like in a lot of different places. So we're kind of figuring out like how we make the nuts fit with the thread and also what the specs of the thread need to be. And also, yeah, like reduce the friction and all that sort of stuff. Check the quality and all that. So yeah, that's pretty much that. Uh, We'll just head back to my corner. I think we need more for the computers. More? Yeah. Okay. Like, there's no box over there. And I was going to bring something tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We got our <laughs> filament from Taiwan. Finally, Printing Farm is running as usual. Uh, yeah, I, th I think that's pretty much it. Um, otherwise, long mills are shipping. As usual, Vortex rotary axis, we've cleared the queue. So if you order one now, they should ship out pretty soon. But we are going to run out pretty soon. I'd say in like the next month to two months. Uh, and then we're making a new batch. But that'll be that'll take like two to three months. So uh, you know we might have a gap. We'll see. Yeah, just business as usual. Cool. Um, yeah, so that's the update for October. 2023. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Otherwise, we'll be back next month and give you another update. And uh, make sure to read the blog because there'll be more stuff there. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.